I said, if you come back, you'll get to talk to your sister. You'll get to talk to your husband, and we'll, you won't have to do the rehabilitation project for us, and we'll treat you better, and made all these promises, and I wanted it to be true. But when I went back, I got stuck there for another three damn years. And my sister didn't talk to me, and my husband divorced me. And it, it was rough. Three years, I was like in semi-isolation. I had to do manual labor every day, despite the fact that my back and my neck were in bad shape from, from past injuries. It drove me nuts. I was in so much pain. I mean, I was, uh, I lost my will to live at one point and they finally uh, stopped harassing me because they were afraid I was gonna die on them. I'm like, oh, that would be bad public relations for the church for somebody to die on our premises because it already happened down in Clearwater. Lisa McPherson died. So we don't want it to happen again. So they finally let me, finally let me go. But at that point, <laughs> I didn't wanna go. I needed to be taken care of. I mean, I, I was like a, a basket case and uh, Anyway, I don't, um, I don't really want to, I'm, obviously I'm still alive. <laughs> I made it out, I'm, I'm living my life. Um, but the reason I, I'm talking out really is that, uh, uh, you know, I'm not against any of the Scientology belief system that, that helps people. I'm not against the idea that, that the mental health system needs to be reformed. I'm not against any of these good things. I'm against the abuses, the treatment. You know, I worked for the Sea Organization for 18 years. I got involved when I was 16 years old. And I worked hard for them. I worked sometimes over 20 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, I, uh, you know, for less than 30 cents an hour. And yet, when I couldn't do it anymore, I couldn't be a workhorse for them anymore and I didn't want to be there. I was treated like I was like I was a, a criminal. And uh, and that shouldn't that should be well what happened to me is illegal and I think that I, I was in such, you know, bad shape after it happened that I didn't I wasn't able to deal with it um, right away. Um, but I am, you know, now able to speak up about it and, and explain to people uh, that Scientology has a dark side and it needs to be faced and they shouldn't be allowed to get away with this kind of stuff just because they're a religion. Uh, I got one minute left. I'm trying to think of what else. <laughs> what else I want to say. Um, a lot of people ask me, like, uh, how'd you get involved? And um, I already had a couple of people here explain um, the recruitment process. And um, one of the things that happened to me when I was really, really young, uh, when I was 15 years old, actually, at a Scientology mission, I, was, I didn't have enough money to buy the Scientology courses. And they'd been marketed to me really well, and I was interested, and I wanted to study them. So. Uh, the joining staff was like uh, uh, promoted to me as like a work study kind of program where you uh, join staff and then you are able to get your courses just because you're on staff. So, uh, so I did that. Of course, the first year that I worked at a mission, um, I didn't get, I mean, I just worked and worked. I was like a workhorse. I worked mimeograph, I did reception. I wasn't getting paid and I didn't get any Scientology courses. So I was, I was like wanting the Scientology courses because uh, there were so many people saying how great it was. So then I, when I was 16, a Sea Organization recruiter came to recruit me. He approached me without my mother around. Uh, he promised me a lot of things, help with my education, um, that I would get to finish high school and college and I would get all these wonderful things. I'd get to learn Scientology. I'd get, you know, room and board and medical and dental, and I'd get to visit my family every year for three weeks, and it would just be wonderful. So we went to my mother's house to get her permission, 
and she was drunk, and the recruiter got her to sign the permission slip anyway. My little brother was there, he was only 14, and she said, hey, you want to come too? And my little brother, sure. So we got stuck in a plane to Clearwater, Florida, and um, I'd say we arrived, <coughs> and we were put to work right away uh, doing laundry for the, uh, one of the higher organizations there. I was up till literally 2 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, doing laundry every day, laundry and cleaning rooms for about a month. <laughs> and at the end of it, I was like, oh my god, I, what am I doing here? I, I can't do this. I can't be staying up all night and not going to school and, and all this. And, and uh, the person who was my senior said, well, actually, we were wrong. We made a mistake. You're, you're not supposed to be doing this work. And we're going to do have you do this other program where you do some staff training first and you'll get enough sleep and you'll be on a proper schedule and you know we just needed to follow Elrin Hubbard's rules properly we weren't doing it before and so you know we apologize so you can stay cuz you know that's not going to happen again so then i stayed and even if i was to have left i didn't have any money my mom didn't have any money what would have i have done at clearwater florida at that age so I did the next step, which was some basic staff training, um, and I had to sign a no-charge invoice for three thousand dollars. <laughs> I was 16 years old, and I, and here was, I was signing this thing, saying that if I left, I would owe them three thousand dollars, and it just kept piling up, like over the years. I mean, I think by the time I was 17 or 18, I would have owed them twenty, thirty thousand dollars for just for just staff training. Not, I mean, no, I didn't do any, like, Scientology training. It was just basic administrative stuff, like, here's your three-basket system, and here's how you write dispatches, and here's how you request, um, pr do purchase orders, things like that. Um. <laughs> uh, well, there's so many things I could say. I mean, uh, 18 years is a long time. I could tell you story after story, and, and a lot of it you would you wouldn't believe, you wouldn't believe it could actually happen here in the state of California or in, in Clearwater. Uh, uh, the only other thing that I'd say I want to point out is that there, there is definitely a lack of uh, respect for the human body and health, I found, just sort of predominantly in a lot of this, in the SEA organizations. And I found that out the hard way is I, I had an accident in 1993. I injured myself in a motorcycle crash, injured my neck and my shoulder. And I went back to work two days after almost breaking my neck in an accident. And I, I want to tell you what I did for, for a job. You, you see this guy here with a camera on his shoulder? That's what I did for them. So after my accident, where I almost, I tore a bunch of muscles in my shoulder, my arm, and my, my neck, herniated three discs in my neck, I had to go back to work and carry a camera on my shoulder. And I had, was not allowed to take painkillers. And I had to do that for long, long hours. <laughs> and uh, man, that was tough. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I get people saying, hey, you know, oh, you, went, you were nuts. And you know, and I mean, in, in Scientology, I, I got in trouble for, for having a, you know, a nervous breakdown. And I thought, you know, you would too. <laughs> you would too if you were working over 20 hours a, a day and you had to carry around a camera on a shoulder that you'd almost broken. It, it, was, it was tough. And, um, it, you know, there's no, like, employer, there should be employer responsibility for the safety and care of the workers. And um, they're, like most companies, they have, like, some sort of oversight on how workers are treated, their safety and their health. And within the Scientology organizations, there, there was really hardly any of that. And uh, that's another thing that I think really needs to be corrected. Just because something is a religious group doesn't mean that they can just throw the safety and health of their workers out the window without, you know, taking proper uh, measures to look after their health. <laughs>